my chest was really heavy and it was like a cold feeling everywhere and my breath was really slow. It just didn't feel right, right, right. It felt like I was very close to being gone. I ended up confronting the guy and I asked, well, was it laced? And he said, yeah. And I said, well, was it fentanyl? And he said, yeah. That horrible experience was why I stopped and that's what's led me to here. My name is Layla Attar. I'm 20 years old and I'm a person recovering from addiction. I started using when I was about 15 or 16. I was dealing with bullying happening at school, family problems at home. My parents had ended up confronting me about smoking marijuana, told me to pack my bags, just drop me off at a bus stop. I went to a homeless shelter and then that lasted for about a week as well and then got kicked out of there. It's dehumanizing. The shelter experience in itself is very cold and not very warm as like a 16 year old who's kind of like lost their way. And then going from that to being like kicked out in the middle of the night to actually being homeless and like needing to like go to a forest to spend the night was the most terrifying experience in my life probably. That led me to using opiates and painkillers and that lasted for basically three years of my life which were pretty much a blur. In November of 2016, I, I was buying Percocets off of somebody at work. One night I ended up going home and I just took a couple of pills and I don't remember what happened after that. It was like a, a punch in the gut because somebody that I knew and that I trusted was selling me something and gave me something that he knew could very well kill me. Fentanyl is a synthetic opioid, so it's 50 to 100 times more powerful than heroin and morphine. And basically right now it's, it's in all of the drug supply in the black market and it's poisoning people. Fentanyl used is a, is a whole different animal. Part of the reason that this is so dangerous is that people are finding this very difficult to predict the dose that they're getting. My name is Nick Delroy, and I'm a school-based counselor for Rita Wood Addiction and Family Services. Today's youth are exposed to a lot of dangers and pitfalls that are new, and they're constantly evolving. Unfortunately, a lot of the stakes have increased significantly. If I don't know what it is that I'm using or the potency of the drug that I'm using, with a drug that doesn't cause overdose so easily, that might not be as big of a deal as it is with fentanyl, where a very, very small amount, in fact, even smaller than the naked eye can see, is enough to kill me. It's a very delicate process, especially at the beginning of counseling, to welcome a student in there and give them the impression, in a way that is authentic, that this is a place that they can talk and that they can talk about any of the things that they need to talk about. They're wondering if I'm gonna be somebody else that tells them what to do or somebody else that gives them advice that they don't want. If I add confidentiality into that and really give them the impression that this is their space to fill up with whatever they need to talk about, that's a big seller for these students. I think things probably would have been a lot different had somebody been there to talk or educate or whatever. I feel like a lot of the paths that I've chosen and a lot of the things that I've got myself into wouldn't have happened the way that they did and I probably could have avoided a lot of pain from it. My goals in life are to help people, I mean, one that are struggling and to give a voice to those that don't have it. And I think a lot of that's gonna involve like public speaking and just reaching out as much as I can and pursuing an education that'll allow me to help people going forward in the future as well. There's a place to go to talk to people who you can trust, who understand what's going on and who have something to offer if you need help. Project Step is hugely important for the community of Ottawa. Without the funding that we're getting through Project Step, that we would be crippled in our ability to provide these services to youth in the city. I'd say that Project Step is, is so important in Ottawa and, and for kids overall, just because for eight hours a day, you've got kids in this one environment that you really have a great place to intervene. And it's important to catch it when it's early. It's easier to break the habit when you're 16 as opposed to 45. And I think it's really important to know that there's somebody out there who gets it. Because when you're a young person and you feel like the whole world's against you as it is, and then you've also got an addiction that you're hiding from it, it just it makes things really hard. No one should have to suffer alone.